Hello and welcome to part four of the Avid Media Composer tutorial and uh, today we're going to look at uh, making edits directly to your timeline and how that relates to applying multiple clips and bringing them onto your timeline and editing them into a sequence. So first off we have already got our, our first shot on the timeline from the previous tutorial uh, which was this uh, camera sweeping shot, so camera pans left to right, uh, it's a top shot uh, along uh, a lot of copperberg glasses and other paraphernalia. Um, <clears throat> so we've got our first shot on our timeline and I'm relatively happy with the shot itself. Um, obviously there's a few things we need to do to refine it, but at the moment that is one order of events. So I've gone ahead already and created a, a couple of extra subclips for the timeline and uh, we want to put together a little sequence now with the four shots that we have here. So moving forward, uh, if we pick this, the, a glass shot, which also pans left, uh, sorry, left to right uh, along a lot of empty copperberg glasses. Uh, if I want to drag this now onto my timeline, if I did this, uh, you may have noticed uh, something has happened there to our previous shot. And if we look forward, uh, dragging and dropping uh, a uh, the shot from your source monitor down to your timeline will just overwrite your pre-existing shot that you already have there on your timeline. So you gotta be very careful uh, of this. So if we just control Z or command Z uh, on Mac and come back, uh, there, is a there, is a there is a way around that. So. What we need to do, let's just decide, uh, as a good rule of thumb, effectively with the way Avid works as an editor, wherever we have our vertical line, or our blue position indicator as it's called, will dictate where we have our edit point made. So, with that in mind, if I decide I want to use this shot in our source monitor and put this down there, I, can, I decide that maybe I want to put it, let's just put it in the middle for the moment for argument's sake. If I use this tool here called the splice in, it's now made a cut where that position indicator was. So if I command Z and go back and do it again, so wherever my position indicator does, it is located, uh, an edit will be made using these tools here. So this is the most important tool here, this yellow arrow forward tool called the splice in. If I select that, it's effectively now made an edit of this clip here uh, in the middle of my two my camera pan, which uh, for the sequence isn't ideal, but what it's done is it's made a cut in the middle of this original video and split that one shot that was originally one shot into now two. So it's still preserved it, but it's just split it into and inserted a brand new clip in the middle between them. So that's what the splicing tool does. So if I go back, uh, there is another tool called the Overwrite, which does a slightly similar thing, but as the name suggests, if I click on it, it just overwrites. So that was the process that you saw earlier when I just dragged that clip down there. It just overwrote. So not very useful, really, uh, uh, for, for the purposes of making in edits on the timeline, but it's good for putting in edits and moving them around later, which I will also show. So, two most important edit tools, the overwrite and the splice in. So they're very good tools to remember. The overwrite is good for a few things. Um, so if we bear these two in mind, we find these very similar tools down here on our timeline, which these are the tools that directly influence our timeline. So the red tool, which is uh, called the lift or overwrite, extract and splice in, which you saw from up here, these two. And then these are overwrite trims. These are our trim tools. So you have the overwrite and the ripple edit or the ripple trim. Um, and we will get onto these two in a few moments. So um, we want to add a splice. We want to, we want to basically put uh, a splice in uh, at a point that I think looks nice. So let's just watch this clip. I know for a fact this has a little bit of a wobble at the end. So we can, let's just find the end. There we go, hold it there, and let's perform a splicing. So we've got that, uh, and now we've cut that, made that cut there, 
and we've done a cut there. Now, probably not the most fluid, but that's fine, we've made a splice in. In this case, you could also use the overwrite tool because we don't want to keep that footage that we had there earlier, so we could do this instead as well. But again, I'm generally quite cautious about using the overwrite tool because it copies over things. So I generally like to use the splicing tool. So we're just going to use that. And as you can see, we've got the carryover of that wasted material there. So there's two ways we can delete this. We can use this uh, yellow arrow, so make sure these are all disabled. And we can basically click and hold that and it deletes it. The same can be done is if you deselect the yellow uh, and use the red overwrite, we can delete that too and it leaves a mark. It leaves uh, nothing there. So we've done that. We're watching back our clip and decided we want to make some further trim. So this is where the trim tools that I mentioned earlier come into play, the overwrite and the ripple trim. So if we zoom in, so command bracket or control bracket if you're on a PC to zoom in, if we want to make sure if we can get a much cleaner cut on the pan, as you can see in this shot, the, the pan slows down. So let's just watch it. I probably want to try and cut there. If we select our ripple trim now and hover it over our, sorry, hover it over our timeline, you can notice that we have this yellow kind of film strip tool. If we hover away from it, we don't get that. But if we have this, basically we can ha have it either side of the clip. But what this does effectively is there's a very similar thing to what the splicing tool does. Avid has basically two common tools, the splicing and the overwrite, which is signified by yellow and red. Yellow, generally as a rule of thumb I always remember, is a ripple, basically it's a ripple tool, it's a ripple edit tool. So uh, as you can see, if I move that, it's now dragging uh, the clip I'm editing, as you can see in the source monitor, so shortening it but then bringing everything from the program monitor on the right, uh, on from the um, timeline, forward. So if I let go now, I now have a much cleaner cut. Uh, so it's basically what, rip, what, what these ripple trim tools do, the yellow tools, the, the splicing and the ripple uh, trim tool do, is they basically make edits to your timeline to just singular clips. So any clips that are either left or right of the uh, of your clip are not affected it only affects one clip in this case when i have this selected it only makes changes to this clip on this side when it's like this if i want to make changes to the other side it obviously defaults over so i can actually and if i drag it in i can actually shorten my edit that way and do a ripple edit that way so if i play it back now it's a much nicer pan it continues over from one shot to the other. So the ripple trim is very good for that. Now I just want to show you what the overwrite trim does. Uh, it does, again, a, a slightly similar thing, but uh, again, hence the name overwrite, it just pastes over uh, your current, your, your edit of your shot, your, your shot that comes after. So if we zoom out, this is much easier to describe actually this way. So at the moment, uh, we got our overwrite tool enabled and as you can see it is just copying over the shot on our left is just writing over the shot on the right um, which isn't great because now we have all that dead shot that we had earlier that we tried to cut out so if we go back uh, and we use our trim tool instead you'll notice this is how the trim tool works it is only moving the shot uh, on the left and it is moving the shot on the right and not copying over it which is very very useful indeed uh, and vice versa if we come left it's moving it in as well so basically it's only making changes to this clip that we have selected it's not editing anything after or before uh, anything that comes after which is something to bear in mind so as you can see the overwrite trim actually just pastes over so copies over and destroys any shots you have later and it doesn't alter the timeline so this is very important to remember um, but what i like these trim tools for is they refine edits very very well uh, on the timeline directly so it's something you should really try and aim to get used to so um, 
If we wanted to make any changes to the timeline itself, uh, either put things in or move things around, we can use our two trim, our two tools up here. So the overwrite, if we have that selected, we can actually move uh, our, our clips around that way. And again, that just pastes over stuff. That pastes over any clip you have before or after the clip, as you can see there. If we use our, uh, our splice in or extract tool, it basically creates an edit like that. So it splits and cop and then moves over anything. So basically the, a good a good tip to remember is the the splice in and ripple tools which are yellow here, here and here. I always think of them again as rippled edit tools and they're also non-destructive to other clips. Whereas the red tools, the overwrites, uh, which you can find here, those copy over they are destructive, they copy over clips. And uh, another good tool to remember when you are editing, so if we just come back, so we've got this now, um, is our add edit tool, which can be found up here, which is basically just a cut tool, a razor tool, like you find in Premiere. So here we can make edits, which is very, very useful. And as you can see, we've just made an edit there. So if we wanted to uh, make an edit now, we can just select our extract tool here, our yellow, our yellow tool. Uh, and now we can create a ripple edit. And as you can see, that has effectively done, as you probably recognize, that's what Premiere, that's just more or less how Premiere works. So I create an add edit tool either side. Then using yellow splicing tool or extract tool, I can now select that edit that I've just made there and press backspace to delete, and then it moves everything backwards. So it basically pre performs a ripple edit. So that's the other ripple tool. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching uh, part four, and I will see you in part five.